season tickets and NFL gear. The battle between NFL players and their fans has begun. The blue-collar fans, those who pay overpriced tickets, are sending a huge message to the players. They are the same patriots who took Hillary down and now are going after the NFL. Americans around this country are starting to protest NFL players who disrespect the flag by burning shirts and tickets. In one video, you can see Brendan Finn, a season ticket holder, burning the tickets. I can't go anymore, says Finn, all the respectful NFL players who still respect the flag and our country. He goes on, I can't pay and I can't watch this happen. He then explains how he is wearing a shirt that belonged to a cop he worked with who was shot dead during a robbery. There are thousands of cops just like him who gave their lives for this country, and these people sit down and protest against cops? I'm burning my tickets, states Finn. The end of an era, I'm sad to see it happen, but I'm sad to see what happened to America even more, says Finn as the tickets burn. And Finn isn't the only one. The social media is filled with Americans who have had it enough. Another clip shows a Steelers fan, who is a veteran, burning his Steelers t-shirts while playing the national anthem and waving the American flag. Robert L. Williams, who is another Steelers fan, burned all his NFL gear. He said his great-uncle's bones are at the bottom of Pearl Harbor. He said, we have morals in this country. We stand for this country. My great uncle's bones are lying in the bottom of Pearl Harbor. For this country. For the flag. For your freedom to play in the NFL and to say whatever you want to say. But you do not disrespect the flag and the country and the Constitution. So watch this stuff burn. There are many other examples, like veteran Jim Heaney, who also burned his NFL gear. Maybe the media is presenting these disrespectful players as they are doing something good. But the honest Americans aren't falling for that crap. Another clip on the social media shows Kansas City Chiefs fan saying he is ashamed to support his team, because of the disrespectful actions the players demonstrated. He says he will never pay another dime on NFL. If the anthem protests continue NLF will go down because the most devoted people who are also season tickets holders are the working class and they can't stand and watch as some spoiled players disrespect this great nation. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below. Stevie Wonder takes a knee at the Global Citizen Festival. Stevie Wonder knelt Saturday night on stage, but it was for a whole different reason than the NFL players. Wonder was singing at the Global Citizens Festival when he decided to take a moment to talk about the controversy concerning the kneeling that has been popular these couple of weeks. Whenever you need to interrupt hate, stand down bigotry, condemn sexism, and find love for all of our global brothers and sisters, every day, Wonder said. Tonight, I'm taking a knee for America, he added while kneeling. But not just one knee. I'm taking both knees, he said. Both knees in prayer for our planet, our future, our leaders of the world, and our globe, he said, before he finished his prayer, saying Amen. He knelt not in a sign of a protest but in a sign of respect towards God. And he certainly showed one is the proper way to kneel. Even though Wonder sometimes has expressed his liberal side, we have to respect this man for his choice to make this impressive gesture. Our love for our nation and God is the only thing that can keep us together in this time when the world is filled with hate and division. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below. Sarah Sanders was asked if national anthem protest was appropriate. Her response silences the room. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders took the podium amid deep controversy over the president wading into the NFL national anthem protest controversy. Sanders was asked immediately about the controversy. This isn't about the president being against anyone. This is about the president and millions of Americans being for something. Being for honoring our flag, honoring our national anthem, 
and honoring the men and women who fought to defend it. When pressed again, multiple times, by reporters asking if Trump's remarks were appropriate, Sanders leveled a response to the room that shut down the question. I think it is always appropriate for the President of the United States to defend our flag, to defend the national anthem, and to defend the men and women who fought and died to defend it. When pressed again, Sanders made the White House's position clear. It is always appropriate for the President to defend our flag, to defend the national anthem. Hold on, I'm not finished. It's always appropriate for the President of this country to promote our flag, to promote our national anthem, and ask people to respect it. The debate and protests will most likely continue, but at least we know the White House's position. Watch the video below. Louisiana lawmaker cuts the only thing the New Orleans Saints loved the most after anthem protests. There was almost no team that didn't protest the national anthem by bending the knee, and the New Orleans Saints were no exception. As a result, a Louisiana lawmaker is taking drastic measures against the players who engaged in this ugly practice and strip them off the one thing they care for. The weekend was lit on fire as numerous NFL teams took a strong approach against the national anthem and refused to stand, following into Colin Kernick's earlier footsteps. President Trump could not have been more serious when he commented all those who disrespected the country should be fired at once. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. The POTUS noted. One of the teams that expressed their revolt with the national anthem as well, was the New Orleans Saints. I would say, personally, I am disappointed in the comments that were made, said Saints coach Sean Payton. I think we need a little bit more wisdom in that office. That's being a little blunt, but that's how I feel. I want that guy to be one of the smarter guys in the room, and it seems like every time he's opening his mouth, it's something that is dividing our country and not pulling us together," he continued. Some teams, including the Saints and Pelicans, issued a statement, pointing out Trump's words were disappointing and inappropriate. One player even remained in the locker room while the anthem was playing. We're talking about Daron Armstead. Raphael Bush, Kenny Vaccaro, Chris Banjo, Sheldon Rankins, Alex O'Kaffer, Cameron Jordan, Adrian Peterson, Alvin Kamara, Brandon Coleman, and Mark Ingram remained seated as the anthem commenced, while Thomas Morstead, Marshawn Lattimore, Craig Robinson, and Kobe Fleener locked arms and stood proudly as the anthem was playing. I am proud of every one of them, Coach Payton said. On Monday, Louisiana State Representative Kenny Havard, R. St. Francisville, vowed to cut millions of state tax dollars, going to the Saints, the NFL, and related groups. The very reason, the Saints have the privilege and opportunity to play professional football while being paid millions is because someone in uniform died protecting their right to do so," Havard said. It is a disgrace to the men and women of this nation and state who have sacrificed so much, he continued. Disrespecting our national anthem and flag in the name of social injustice is the highest form of hypocrisy, added Havard. Our free society made possible by our fighting men and women has made available free education, free lunch, housing, and free health care and is now being considered socially unjust, he said. It is time the taxpayers quit subsidizing protest on big boy playgrounds. I believe in the right to protest but, not at a taxpayer-subsidized sporting event. Do it on your own time. There are plenty of disabled children elderly and veterans in this state that would appreciate the money. A 2015 Forbes report suggests the Saints and Pelicans owner Tom Benson was set to rake in an estimated $392 million from state subsidies through 2025. In time of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome lease the state will pay Benson at least $198 million in increased revenue from the Superdome, 
$142 million in rental payments on property Benson owns, $10 million in bonuses for bringing the Super Bowl to New Orleans and $2.6 million in tax breaks. Benson will get another $40 million from private rent payments to a tower he bought as part of the deal. Havard has a strong point. Billionaire teams that made decent human beings of their players, should not be excused for actions of this sort. Paying them would be adding more fuel to the fire and causing massive issues with other players who decided to express their patriotism for a change. We're in the middle of a mountain high roller coaster which doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. It is only sad we're witnessing the American on American hatred growing in front of our eyes, which makes the country's worth before the world seriously ridiculous. Sign the petition below. Dear NFL, we will not support millionaire greats who hate America and disrespect our armed forces and veterans. Who wins a football game has zero impact on our lives. Who fights for and defends our nation has every impact on our lives. We stand with the heroes, not a bunch of rich, entitled, arrogant, ungrateful, anti-American, degenerates. Signed, We the People. Petition, Fire NFL Players Who Protest the National Anthem. First Black Medal of Honor recipient Never Let the Flag Touch the Ground. Every hero is remembered for what he did for others, but sadly that is not Kaepernick case. He is remembered for what he refused to do, stand in honor of the national anthem. But here is one reminder and someone who Kaepernick and other players can look up to. William H. Carney, first black man to earn the Medal of Honor treated the flag, who was born into slavery years before the Civil War. After running away to the North to get his freedom, Carney decided to join the Union forces a volunteer sergeant. He could have hidden in Canada and wait for the war to be over but he didn't do that. On July 18, 1863, 54th Massachusetts Colored Infantry Regiment soldiers led the charge on Fort Wagner. During the battle, the color guard, John Wall, was struck by a fatal bullet. He staggered and was about to drop the flag when Carney saw him explained the state's news service. That moment is immortalized in the movie Glory. Carney seized the flag, and held it high despite fierce fighting, inspiring the other soldiers. He was wounded twice, in his leg and right arm, and bled heavily, continued state's news. Although the army sergeant could hardly crawl, he clutched the flag until he finally reached the walls of Fort Wagner. He planted Old Glory in the sand and held it tightly until he was rescued, nearly lifeless from blood loss. During his final moment, he handed off the banner to a fellow soldier with a message, Boys, I only did my duty, the old flag never touched the ground. Carney got Medal of Honor for his courageous actions, and his pledge to never let the American flag fall down became an empowering cry for the military and every patriot in America. People like Kaepernick don't get to be heroes by disrespecting the flag when there were and still are people like Carney. Kaepernick and the other players will never understand how powerful is the national anthem and flag to the people who love this country. There can never be a comparison between the football field and the battlefield, and that's the main reason why these spoiled athletes can't find it in themselves to love and respect the flag. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below.